I'm always looking for easier ways to implement, install, and configure Clipper firmware. And I'm hoping that some of these touchpads that are out now make it a lot easier to use. Today we're going to take a look at the Big Tree Tech Pad 7. Hello everyone, Chris here. I hope you're all well, and today we will be taking a look at the Big Tree Tech Pad 7. It's an all-in-one unit that has a compute module on it so that you don't have to have a Raspberry Pi. The screen does all the heavy lifting while providing a pretty flashy interface to interact with. But I am going to say, I'm not one to put a touchscreen on a 3D printer. I kind of like the old click wheel LCD with just enough information on it to get you up and running. I really don't need anything else. But I am interested in an easier way to configure and install Clipper firmware. There's a lot of steps you have to do to get it up and running, including flashing things to SD cards, setting up your Raspberry Pi, setting up all your firmware, and I'm hoping that these pads that come out, like the Pad 7, everything's integrated and it makes it much easier. But that's what we're going to find out. I have some content lined up for pads like this. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with it, but I think the Big Tree Tech version is much more stable than other versions, and it should be a good candidate to figure out if it's going to make our Clipper lives a little easier. So let's start just by seeing what's in the box and what you're going to get if you purchase one of these. Here's the Pad 7. Now, I don't know of a retail shop where you can go and buy one of these. I've never seen one of these on a shelf, but it would be kind of cool if they would add like all the features to the back of the box like retail packaging would have. Like, what is this thing going to do for me? I mean, they have a little bit of stuff here, but I was just thinking about that. It'd be cool if they actually told you a little bit more about it. But again, I don't know if you actually could get these retail or not. But let's see what we have. We have our quick start guide. We've got some stickers, which are always important. Our pad on this side. We've got pretty much every AC power plug known to man, all the converters that you might need around the world. We did get our duck, which for some reason becomes increasingly important to me. Inside this bag, We get an accelerometer we can use with Clipper for input shaper. The cable to use that. Some standoffs, I'm guessing for the compute module. A USB drive converter. Looks like some foam tape. As well as a DC converter. These pads do use a barrel jack, but it looks like you could plug in some wires, maybe from a PSU, to convert it over if you wanted to power it with the printer. So that's cool. In this other box, this is the DC adapter. So we'll just pick our plug choice here for the US, snap that in, and we're ready to start powering it up. Now the pad itself, it does have a protective film on it, so that's good to see. So let's cue that sequence real quick. But now that that's over with, we have a pretty nice screen. We've got some LEDs over here. It looks like it's even got an integrated camera, as most of these tablets probably do. Power button here on top. We have our compute module back here under this heat sink. I believe that's the Big Tree Tech version of the CMP4, I believe they call it, the compute module Raspberry Pi. It's going to work the same, runs Armband Linux, so we're good there. You've got an SPI interface, as well as CAN, Ethernet, USB and DC input. This does run at 12 volt. So SPI will be for your accelerometer, things like that, and then CAN. You can use that in a number of ways. We've never really gone over CAN bus. It's just a different kind of communication bus. But everything's pretty self-explanatory. It's got a stand on it, some rubber feet, and your SD card slot over here. It does come with one, and this should have everything installed on the Linux side that you need to run Clipper. This is a 32 gig SanDisk A1 card, at least the one that I got. So it's a pretty high quality card, all things considered. Resolution on this is 1024 by 600. So it should be a pretty nice screen. On the left side over here, you do have some controls up and down. I'm guessing that's probably an audio jack there. And on this side, we do have another USB, an A, and then a C down here. So all kinds of different ways to communicate with it. 
If you do need to remove this compute module, you can just pull these two screws here. The plastic part comes off. You have some dip switches in here on how you'd like some of these ports configured. It's got a map down here if you need to change something up. So that's nice that you can reconfigure it if you want to. And then you can take these four screws off to lift the module heatsink. And once the heatsink's off, you can see that the module is actually installed with these standoffs. So they're screwed directly down to the base. So you could back these off if you'd like to remove it. If we take a look under the tape, this is the Big Tree Tech version. This is the CB1 version 2.2. That's an H616 processor, but could be swapped out with the Raspberry Pi version if you really wanted to. Now, I'm sure that you could use your SD card, plug that in, plug it into the Ethernet, and then try to find the IP. It would probably list it for you, but you plug in your power, power it up, and it's gonna give you a little bit of indication on how to connect to it because you should be able to use it as a web interface just like any other Clipper install, any other Raspberry Pi. But I would like to use the Wi-Fi. On the quick guide, there's a QR code to take you over to the Big Tree Tech GitHub. Over on the GitHub, here's all the information for Pad 7, including the user manual. Just flipping through the user manual, I was making some assumptions, but that appears to be a light sensor, not a camera. So there you go. Volume, audio out. So everything looks to be pretty much how we expected it to be. They go through all those dip switches we saw on how to configure them. But the main thing we're looking for is how to configure this and how to use Wi-Fi. And they do go through how to flash the firmware onto the SD card so you can use it and what all the options are. So I'm assuming that everything on the SD card is ready to go. So let's just plug it into the computer and see what's on it. Hopefully it follows all the same information that we have here in the manual. So on the SD card in the boot directory, we have looks like a system config and a board environment.txt. We're mainly just interested in getting up and running. So we're gonna wanna edit this system config file. And this is just the basic stuff that you need to know to get up and running Wi-Fi. All I'm interested in here right now, I don't wanna change anything that I don't have to, is updating my Wi-Fi information. So I took the comment off of Wi-Fi SSID, put my wireless internet name here. Remember, they're case sensitive and put your Wi-Fi password here. That should at least get us up and running on the network. There's a handful of other settings you can adjust. Hopefully you can adjust this on the pad as well, but we're gonna go from here. Again, not changing as much. We don't wanna change anything we don't have to. So just with updating our Wi-Fi info, we're gonna put our SD card back in our tablet and we're gonna assume that we're ready to go. So let's power up. We're plugged in, we'll hit the power button here on top. Got a nice logo while it's loading up. And we've hit an error. It's talking about the printer.cfg file. It doesn't have one, which is pretty much what I would assume. We don't have a printer plugged into this yet and we haven't done any editing or anything like that. So I would assume that you have to do most everything from the web interface. You might be able to get some stuff done here, but it's not gonna be very convenient on a touchpad. If we poke around a little bit, we can go to menu. We have network information. There's your IP. It spells it all out here with host name, all that good stuff, other internet, that we have that it senses, so it gives you a list of the networks, but dot two is the one we're gonna want. It does have feedback noises. System gives you mainsail, fluid, clipper versions, all that good stuff. Settings, just all the settings for the touchpad. Font sizes, power off time, all that good stuff. So let's head to the web menu and see what we've got. So if we head to the IP, we've got mainsail here. There's the same error that we saw on the screen. No configuration file. So we'll go to machine, we'll look in here. There's a printer.cfg, but it just has an include statement. It's looking for that Big Tree Tech configuration file, which it does not have. So the screen looks good, everything seems to be working. And it does have that compute module on it. It's already got Linux installed with Clipper. And that gets you a large chunk of the way there. All of that Clipper stuff is out of the way. 
but you would still have to go back in and recompile if you had a different type of board that you needed to load onto the SD card to get it over to your MCU to run Clipper, all of that stuff that it takes to run Clipper. So it gets some of the work done, but not all of it. There's still a lot to do. Now for the new user, I don't know that this is really going to help you out that much at all. You still have to be able to get in and do a lot of things. We're going to check it out. But maybe this is a good path if you're already running Clipper. How do you get over to start running the screen if you're already running Raspberry Pi? And that's the route that I'm going to take. So let's see the, what printer I can find that's already running Clipper, and we'll give it a try with the touchpad. So I do still have my Ender 3 V2 and my Raspberry Pi configuration. This does run Clipper. I've done Clipper testing on it before, so it's up and running currently. So we'll use this as our test case. Basically, we just want to be able to use the pad to control it rather than the existing Raspberry Pi. This is the configuration for it, the existing Raspberry Pi. Basically, we should be able to leave the Pi up and running and have the screen running side by side and just swap the USB cable over to the pad. So we'll have the configuration files if we need them. I'm curious what's going to happen with the version that we're running on the pad versus the versions that we're running on the Pi right now. If you take a look at machine, here's all the different versions we run today versus what might be running on the pad. So we'll take a look at that. In the user manual for the Pad 7, there isn't a lot of information about how you actually configure your printer. You're going to need to compile the file to load onto your printer, do different things, but it does use that CB1 compute module from Big Tree Tech. So you can use the guide for the CB1 to get all that stuff done, but maybe they should include some of that in this doc. On the Big Tree Tech GitHub here, you can go to the CP1 module, CB1 module, get the manual, and go from there. We're still going to have to get in SSH, compile, get the files we need, load it on the printer, and all that so that our pad can run it. Now, we do have the printer already flashed to Clipper, so hopefully we don't have to do that part but we still have to tell Clipper that we're running a certain type of board to be able to communicate with it. We'll go through all those steps. Just know you'll have to use the manual for the CB1 to do all the commands you need to get it set up. So we already know the IP address. You can get that from the screen or however you want to get it, but we're going to have to use a tool to SSH in and from the CB1 manual, we have the username and password they use by default. Hopefully all that's the same. But we'll use the PuNY tool, go to our IP address. It should be BQ for the username and same for the password, BQ. So we're in, here's our CB1 interface. So now we can start to configure things. Everything's been configured for Clipper. If you do an LS here, they show you all the Clipper directories, main sale, all the stuff they've configured, that's good. If you do from here, if you do an LS printer data, that directory. This is where the configs and everything are that are currently running for that instance. And if we CD into Clipper, this is the code where we can actually compile it. So let's just start by doing an ls forward slash dev. We're looking for the device that's plugged into the pad. There's nothing plugged in right now. So let's move our USB cable for our printer from the printer over to the pad 7. And we'll just plug it into the one over here on the side for convenience. Now that it's plugged in, we'll do that ls slash dev again. Now we have a serial device. So we'll just continue on ls slash dev slash serial. It's usually by ID. And there's the device name for our Ender 3. So by all rights, this should be the same in the existing printer.cfg file, the one I had on my old Raspberry Pi. So if you copied that whole file over to the new pad, it should work. Let's go ahead and do that and we'll take a look at the result. So this is my existing configuration on my Raspberry Pi, the one that works for my Ender 3 V2. I'm gonna take the printer.cfg and download it. Then we're going to go over to the display for the RAS pad, go to machine, and we'll upload it. So there's our existing printer.cfg. 
So just for fun, let's go ahead and restart and see how it handles this file. Host reboot. And when we come back up, it was able to use my existing printer.cfg because the device names were the same. So that makes things a lot easier. So it looks like we have full control. We can go ahead and test it. We'll just home all. The printer is moving, so that's good. If we take a look at the pad, sorry about the angle. I'm trying to avoid the glare here, but it is reporting the temperatures. No more errors. Everything seems to be working. And it has all the typical features that you would expect from one of these pads. The same kinds of things you can do in mainsail or fluid. You can just do it from the touchscreen here. So homing, home all, it's very responsive. Temperatures, PLA, PETG. We get a nice graph down here of all of our temperatures. That's pretty cool. So we're heating up. Actions, you can move around. You can extrude, so the same thing just for the extruder. Fans, macros, so you can run them all right from here. Disable motor and console. So here in the console, you should be able to get a keyboard and just run your G code commands. And it works. You do have shortcut buttons back home. This one takes you to the macros page and then you have emergency stop. In configuration, there's a handful of things you can set. This seems to always be where they limit things. Depending on the screen, most of the time the settings page is where they dumb it down because you probably don't need as many, but at least you can do Z calibrate, set some limits. Network was always there. We'll go into settings a little further. This is all the settings for the pad itself, like we saw before. And you can do the save configuration. So if you're doing a Z calibrate, you make a setting. You can start the auto calibrate here. You can save the config. I'd run that, but this printer doesn't currently have a sensor to do the auto calibrate. And then print options. We don't have any G code, but if we were to load some, Let's just upload a G-code file that I have here. One of the biggest benefits to one of these pads is you could take this with you. So you've got your Raspberry Pi and an interface to kick off the print directly from the printer. So if we go back and take a look at the pad, that file is going to be right here. So you're going to one of your favorite RepRap festivals or Printopia. You take your screen with your Clipper running printer. You have all your files already loaded up, ready to go. You can control them right from this interface. And you even get the thumbnail if you sliced it correctly. One of the biggest advantages, again, I can see from an interface like this. All in all, everything looks really good here. I like the buttons. They're big, easy to use. The screen's really responsive. You've got your SBI interface, so you can use your input shaper. Pretty easy to get installed if you already have a printer configuration and they don't limit you on that CB1. You can get in SSH and configure it with Clipper just like you can any other module. So that's nice to see. If you already have that printer.cfg, it was pretty easy to get it up and running. So since I already had a printer that was up and running Clipper using a Raspberry Pi, I'm using Raspberry Pi OS on this one. The pad runs Armbian, but it's somewhat similar. It was pretty easy to get over to my pad seven. All I had to do was swap the printer.cfg file. Now, if the versions of Clipper and some of the other components were too far off, I'm not sure it would have worked as well as this one did. But this was very straightforward. I stood them both up, copied that printer configuration from one to the other, rebooted, and it started working. We should be good from now on. Now, if you didn't have a printer configuration, the process would be pretty much the same as configuring a brand new Raspberry Pi, because it is just a Pi-like module. I'll show you that just a little bit. As a new user, you would have to go through all these steps. I have a lot of other videos for this, but it's gonna be exactly the same on the Pad 7 because they've left it open and you can use it just how you would any other compute module. So if you didn't have a printer and a configuration for Clipper that you were already running that you could use on your brand new Pad 7, you could start from scratch. Now I have a lot of videos on how to do this, 
but I'll show you the basic process I would use, especially for something like an Ender 3 V2 that you would already have a configuration for. Since we're running native Clipper, all of those configurations are going to be in here, and it's also important to note that the compute modules that Big Tree Tech has, either their Pi or the CB1, all of those are available over here on Armbian. So they're part of the Armbian project, they've got a version for it, they're being maintained out here, you don't have to go directly to Big Tree Tech to get that OS. You can get it from this more social Armbian project. So that's always good to see. But back to our configuration, we've got our Ender 3 V2. So we'll just do an LS again. We've got all of our Clipper stuff here. If you do LS Clipper, there's going to be a config directory. So LS Clipper config. Here's all the default configurations, the examples you can use with your printer. And there is one for V2 right here. So you can take that and you can copy it over to the printer data config folder. And we're going to call it printer.cfg because that's the config we'd like to use. Now, if you already have one, it's going to overwrite it, so be careful. So now we have a configuration we can use. Now we need to compile Clipper. Remember, this, we're starting from scratch here. So we're in the Clipper directory, cd clipper, we'll ls, we're back here, we're good. From here, you want to do a make menu config. And in that configuration we just copied over are going to be all the options you need for this specific printer to create a file. Back to main sale, hopefully any configuration that you have that's in the examples folder is going to have all the information that you need to make that bin file that you can use on your printer. All the info should be up here for our Ender 3 V2 of what we need to select. So we'll enable extra low level configuration options. We'll select our processor, which is an STM32. The type, ours is an F103, so we don't need to make a change. If you do, you can select the model. We'll change our bootloader to 28K, as they suggest. And then we need to change the communication interface to make sure it's on the correct pins for the USB port. For this board, you should select UART1, PA10, PA9. Everything else should be good. We can do Q, Y to save. And then you can go ahead and run your mate command to compile. Once the compile is complete, you will have a clipper.bin file in your out directory. So we're already in clipper. If you just do an ls space out, that's going to list everything in here. There's your clipper.bin. And then you can copy that over to your config folder so that you can reach it from your main cell or fluid interface. So just do a cp out forward slash clipper.bin. And then in our home directory, so use the tilde forward slash printer underscore data forward slash config. Now it's copied to the interface so you can jump back to your browser. There's the clipper.bin file we just created. You can right click and download that and then copy that file to an SD card, rename it firmware.bin, load it on your printer, and you're ready to go using your Pad 7. So there it is, the Big Tree Tech Pad 7. The device seems to be pretty high quality, the interface looks nice, as well as very responsive on the touch screen and easy to use. Now it does come installed with the OS, Clipper, and Mainsail, so that gets you quite a ways down the road to your full Clipper install. And it runs Armbian out of the box and comes with a compute module, the CB1. So you don't have to go directly to Big Tree Tech to get the OS, you can download one that's already compatible. You just have to configure it. Now, if you're already running Clipper on your printer, you should be able to just copy over your printer.cfg or other files that you've created over to the Pad 7 and start using it that way. Now, there might be some conflicts with different OS versions. You might have to update or downgrade depending on where you are, but 90% of the time, it's probably going to work just by copying those files over. Now, if you're starting from scratch, again, they've already done the OS and Clipper portion for you, but you're still going to have to get in and compile your file to load to your printer and set up your configuration. 
The good news is Big Tree Tech has left this open so you can SSH in and still do all the commands that we're used to doing to configure Clipper and not all the devices allow you to do that. So that's a big advantage over this one over some of the other options that are out there. So hopefully you found this helpful. Big Tree Tech did send this Pad 7 over for me to take a look at. No money has exchanged hands and all opinions expressed are my own. That will be it for today and I'll see you really soon on the next one.